Hi, everyone. So first of all, I'd like to thank the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity to share our work. So this work was done in collaboration with uh, Xiaoyue Wang, Megan McNerney, and Kevin White, all at University of Chicago. So we also have a poster, number 76, displayed in the hallway just outside the cafeteria. You're welcome to view it and let me know if you have any comments. So several people actually viewed it yesterday during my poster presentation and gave me very uh, thoughtful comments. So, okay, so I'll start with the definition of epistasis or genetic interaction. I'm going to use the two terms interchangeably. I'm also going to uh, introduce this concept through a historical back, uh, perspective. So this picture here illustrates the, um, this concept. This phenotype one is the phenotype of the wild type, and then you can have 0.7 as the phenotype for mutant A, and 0.5 for the phenotype of mutant B. And then if the two genes are independent and we assume a multiplicative model, then the phenotype outcome for the double mutant would be 0.7 multiplied by 0.5. And if you have a double mutant with a phenotype different from this expected phenotype, then that would be an indication of the two genes in epistasis. In particular, if we look at these two cases, they're identical to one of the single mutants. And these are called masking. Um, masking was initially referred to as epistasis um, by Basin more than a century ago. A few years later, Fisher extended this concept to departure from an additive model. In our project, we define epistasis as departure from an additive or multiplicative model. 